Okay, so in this episode, we're going to actually apply the MVC model to what we did in the last episode, where we just created a test class that had all the different, uh, you know, functions in it, uh, where we should have, according to the MVC model, split it up into different tasks instead. So we're going to do that in this episode here. So what I'm going to do to start with here is I'm just going to go ahead and leave the test class alone. And then at the very end of the episode, we'll go ahead and delete it because there is some information in here that we just need to move around into other documents. So we're just going to go ahead and keep this uh, document for now called test.class.php. Now opening up another file inside our classes folder, I'm going to go ahead and create a new file. And I'm going to go ahead and call this one for users.class.php. Now in one of the first episodes, I talked about the MVC model and how the different tasks of a certain class will be split up into three different documents. Now the user.class.php file is going to be the model of the MVC model that goes in and only interacts with the database. That's the only job it has. Every single method inside this class here is just going to be one very specific uh, query inside the database that we can then later on go in and refer to whenever we need to query again using the same sort of query inside the database. So in that way, we can reuse code again and again and again inside our website. So what this means is that we're going to create two more files because this is the model, but we also need to have a view and a controller. So going back inside my editor, I'm going to create two more files. So inside my classes folder, I'm just going to go ahead and create a new file. I'm going to call this one user with an S behind it, users, view dot class dot PHP. Now it's very important here that when we name these things that you don't name it as users dash view, because if I were to go ahead and go in here and actually name this file users view, that file name is what the class outer loader actually goes in to try and fetch because it has to match up with the class name that we're trying to instantiate. So if I'm creating a class, let's actually go in just for fun here, create a class. We can actually keep it for now because we do actually need to keep this uh, and call this class something like uh, users dash view, then the class name no longer matches up with the actual file name. So therefore the outer loader function that we have in here can't figure things out. So it's very important that we make sure that we name it the same way and we can use capital letters here because that is the way we usually do classes. We use capitalized letters. So we would have to name it in this sort of way. And again, before we continue this, I'm just going to go ahead and create a, another file because we also need to have a controller. So inside my classes here, I'm going to say new file, I'm going to call this one users controller or C O N T R just short for controller dot class dot PHP. So now we have all the files that we do actually need. Uh, so what we need to do now is we need to take the tasks that we have inside the test class and split them up into these three different files. Before we do that, let's actually go ahead and finish off creating our different classes inside these documents. So if we were to go inside users view again, because since we already started this one, we might as well finish it. I'm going to say that I want to extend to my users class, which we haven't created yet, but we will go ahead and do that in just a second because the users class is going to be the class that has all the different information that contains actually connecting to the database and querying stuff inside the database. So just to sort of explain what is going on here, because the users class is going to be the only class that is going to actually interact with the database because that is the model of our MVC model, uh, the users view and if I were to go inside, copy paste this inside my users controller and just change the name here, users controller, this is going to do the exact same thing. This is also going to extend to users. And whenever we need to update something inside the database, you know, like inserting information, uh, updating certain information in the database, creating tables or whatever, then we do that using the users controller. So these two users view and users controller have two different tasks. One just simply fetches, the other one inserts or updates the database. And then our users class simply goes in and handles all the database interactions, which is why that we need to actually extend to the users class from both our users view and also users controller. 
Does that make sense? I hope I explained it in a sort of understandable way, but I, I think I, I think I nailed it. I think. So what we're going to do now is we're going to go back inside our test class and we're going to recreate these methods here inside the test class inside our MVC model. So I'm going to take the first one down here, which is the one where we actually went in and fetched information inside the database. And we're just going to go ahead and ignore the one for now where we didn't actually need any sort of user input because it's the same thing with these two. This one is a little bit simpler, but you know, we might as well take this one since that's a difficult one. Um, so going in and recreating this specific method here, uh, what we're noticing here is that I have some information where I actually go in and I fetch the data from the database. Like this is something that just goes in with an SQL statement and gets information from the database. This is something that the user model need to do because the users, the class that we created in here or haven't created yet, let's actually go and do that, is going to be the one that just handles actually interacting with the database. So we're gonna call this one users. This one does not extend to users, but actually extends to the dbh class with a capitalized D there. And the reason that this one needs to extend to the database class is because the database class actually has the connection to the database. So we have the connection, the users class need that connection to actually interact with the database, and then the users view and the users controller need this information that we're fetching from the database or you know needing to insert into the database using the users class. That makes sense, right? So inside the users class, the first thing I want to do is I actually want to get a single user from the database. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a protected method because we don't actually need to, to do anything with this method here other than referring to it from another class. We don't need to go inside our index page and actually refer to this method because no, 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 no. This one is interacting with the database. We do not want to directly refer to this one or do anything to it. The only classes that should be able to refer to this one is the user's view and the user's controller. That's the idea behind the MVC model, okay? So we need to put this as protected so that only classes that extend to it can access these methods here. So knowing this, I'm gonna go ahead and call this one get user parentheses curly brackets. So what I'm going to do in here now is I'm going to say that I want to select something from the database. So we're going to create a SQL variable. And notice how this is looking pretty much like what we did in the previous episode. The only difference is we're doing it inside a separate class now. So I'm going to say that we have a SQL statement where I want to select all from users where users underscore first name is equal to question mark. Because again, we need to use prepared statements if we're getting information from users that is being submitted inside the website. So what I also need to make sure we do here is we also make sure we include the actual um, information that the user submits to us. So I'm just gonna put that inside uh, the actual parentheses or the parameter of our method, which is just going to be called something like variable name. Uh, down here below, what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually connect to the database. So I'm going to create a new statement variable. I'm going to go ahead and set it equal to uh, this, then point to the connection because we still extend to the database file or to the database. <laughs> we're extending to the database class, which has the database connection in it. So we're just going to refer to connect and then we're going to go ahead and prepare it. So we're going to prepare this statement here. And we need to make sure we actually include the, the SQL statement inside the prepare uh, method. Down below here, what we want to do is we want to actually execute this SQL statement. So I'm going to say variable STMT and point to execute parentheses. And of course, we also need to add in the actual information that we want to execute. So this is going to be the placeholder that gets filled into the question mark that we have inside our statement up there. And having done this, we now need to determine uh, if you want to fetch one or multiple rows, just like we did before. But there is a slight change because we don't want to show the information using this specific class here. Like I said, this class only handles actually running stuff inside the database, like running SQL statements through the database. Actually showing information inside the website is handled using the user's view class that we have in here. 
And again, if we want to update something inside the database, we handle that using the user's controller. So what we need to do here is going to be slightly different than what you saw inside our test class. So in here, I'm going to first of all say that I want to create a, var a variable called results. And I want to go ahead and set this one equal to our statement, stmt. And I want to say I want to fetch all parentheses and semicolon. And again, because we already set a fetch mode inside our dbh class to associative arrays, uh, we don't need to actually insert anything inside this uh, parentheses here. So below here, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take all the information that I'm getting from the database and I'm going to insert it inside an array that I'm going to then pass on to the user view class instead. So all the information we're getting here is inserted inside an array that we can pass on to the next class. So the way I do that is simply by returning variable results. So now if I were to go inside my use of view class, we can actually go ahead and say that I want to show user, or actually let's go ahead and make that into an actual method. So I'm gonna make this one public because we do actually need to reference to this method here from inside our index page because this is our user's view class, which we can actually interact with. So I'm going to say I want to create a public function or method. And in here, we do actually need to pass in a parameter because the actual information that I'm going to query inside the database, which is going to be variable name, has to be passed in here as well. So going in here, I need to make sure I pass in variable name inside my, my method here. I'm going to go ahead and actually fetch the data from my users class because that's the first thing I think we need to do here. So again, I'm going to create a variable called results. Then I'm going to set it equal to variable this because remember we're already extending to the users class so I can refer to that class methods by variable this and then simply point to the method I want to actually fetch something from so get user parentheses and the important thing here is that right now we don't have a parameter inside of here but we do require it inside this method here so I'm just going to go and pass in variable name inside of here so with this, we actually already have all the information from the database. So all I need to do now below here is go ahead and say, well, what do I want to show inside the website? Such as I want to echo out the full name. So we could say full name, colon, space, then add in a variable results. And then because it's an associative array, we just simply need to refer to the actual name of the column. So I could say users underscore first name, like so. You know, you sort of get the idea here. We can just simply spit out the data using our variable results here because it's an associative array inside this variable here because that's what we passed it on as. So we could go ahead and create something that looks something like, and I'm just gonna go and paste what I have over inside my notes. Again, this is just an example to how we could show this inside our website if I wanted to show it, you know, by illustrating it in some sort of uh, a little bit more organized way. So if I were to take this and go inside and refresh the website, you can see that now, whoops, we actually do need to go back inside our index page because right now we're just referencing to the test class. We don't actually need to do that. So let's instead just go ahead and call this one uh, users objects. And then instead we're gonna go ahead and refer to users view. And we're just gonna go ahead and say we want to fetch a method, not called this right here. I'm just gonna go ahead and delete this. And I'm gonna go ahead and refer to uh, show user parentheses. And then we need to insert a name because that's what we've been telling it. We want to make sure we insert a name inside our show users here. So going back here, I could say, I want to illustrate Daniel because we're trying to get the first name here. So with this, if I refresh, you can see that, okay, so it is actually show users, which it shouldn't have been. We should actually just have named this one show user because we're just getting one user from inside the database. So we're just gonna go ahead and change the name of, of show user, you know, so we actually have it as the proper thing. So going back in here and then refreshing the website, you can now see that we get all the information from the user inside the database. So we have the full name, Daniel Nielsen, this is very tiny for you to see, 
Um, we get the full name, we have the date of birth, you know, just showing inside the website. So this is how we would go around doing that. But again, this was just showing information inside the website. What if I want to insert information inside the website? Well, let's go ahead and go inside our user's controller. Now inside the user's controller is going to be where we want to actually update the database, meaning if I want to insert something, update something, do something, you know, to change the database, we do that in here. But we need to start by actually, you know, running the actual query or creating the query that we need to run inside the database. And where does that happen? It happens inside our users class because this is the only one that is allowed to actually interact with the database. It's very important that you make sure the only class that, it, that actually interacts with the database is going to be this one. So I'm just gonna go ahead and go down. I could actually just copy paste this. I'm just gonna copy paste. And I'm going to change it from get user to set user. Because again, like I said, get and set is sort of the keywords we use in order to do something regarding databases. If I want to set something, uh, you know, get something, you know, changing things inside the database. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to delete the bottom part here because we don't actually need that. The rest of it is actually pretty much like it's supposed to be. We just need to tweak it a little bit. So inside the parameter of our set user method, I need to include the three different pieces of data that I need to update the database with because remember inside this specific table here that I have, I have a first name, last name, and a date of birth. So we need to make sure we include that as parameters here. So I'm just gonna go ahead and uh, say first name, last name, and date of birth. So just write it out like this. Um, inside the actual SQL statement, we don't want to select anything. Instead, we want to insert. You know what? We can actually go ahead and just copy paste from inside our test class because why not just do it the shorter way? So I want to insert into users and do the exact same thing as we did there. Insert into users, make sure we have the column names, and then the question marks at the end here because we don't want to just paste in the values. We actually want to run this using prepared statements. So with that said, we need to just fill in the information inside our uh, array down here. So we need to make sure we have first name, last name, and date of birth. So, that, so it's actually being executed properly. So now that we have this, I just need to go inside my uh, users controller and just simply create a method called something like public function. And let's go ahead and call this one create user parentheses, curly brackets. And inside of here, we do actually need to add in the information. So we do need to add in, let's just go ahead and copy paste that one more time. Uh, so going back inside our users, just go ahead and copy paste. So we have all three parameters in there because that's what we need to pass in. So with that, we just simply need to go in and run the actual method from inside our users table. So I'm going to say that I want to refer to this because remember we're extending to the users class. So we just need to use the this keyword and I want to run set user. Was it set user or was it set users? Set user, okay. And then pass in again the three parameters there. Now you might be asking, so why exactly are we doing this? Because as I can see, isn't this just a little bit weird that we go inside a different class just to run the exact same method that is being run inside here? Why don't we just run this method directly and insert the user? Because we could, if we set this to public, just go ahead and say inside our index page that we want to run this method here and then it does the exact same thing. Why do we need to reroute it through our user controller? Well, in order to make sure that our users class only does the database handling and does never get in contact with the actual output inside our website, we need to make sure for security and hierarchy and all that when it comes to the MVC model to not reference directly to the users class. The second reason is that if I were to run a specific method inside my user controller, let's say I don't just want to create a user where I just create, you know, a first name, last name for the date of birth. Let's say I also want to register a car that this user has, and I need to run a second method from inside our users.class.php or inside some other class, then I would need to go ahead and run two different methods in here. So using this sort of controller, we can actually go and run more than just 
you know, it's because it's a very basic example we're doing here. That's why we just need to run one specific method in here. Had it been something a bit more complicated, there would have been much more information in here than just a single method that we're running here. So it may not make sense just from this basic example, more complicated examples, it will make a lot of sense. So with this, I'm actually gonna go ahead and just sort of copy paste uh, our create user method name here. So I'm gonna go inside my index page and instead of showing a user, I'm going to go ahead and create not a user's view. Actually, let's just go ahead and, and copy paste this as well. Create another one. Let's call this users object two. And instead refer to our users controller. Then instead of running our show user, I want to run create user. And of course we need to insert some actual parameters here. So instead of uh, John Doe, like within the last episode, let's go ahead and say Jane Doe. Again, because that's sort of the tradition when it comes to not knowing a specific name. Uh, date of birth, let's say 19, actually let's do something old. Let's do 1834. Then make sure we do some sort of date of birth. So we can say zero five and 11. So with this, I can actually go back inside my website and you'll notice that we're going to get the exact same information inside the browser, but because I'm updating information inside the database, it's going to actually change my database table. So going in here and refreshing, you can actually see that we have John Doe one more time because I did actually go in and refresh the browser once uh, in the previous episode. Um, <laughs> so we're pasting in the same information from the previous episode. That's, that's my bad. Don't worry about it. If I update again, it's not gonna keep updating with a new John. It's it's just because I sort of messed it up there. You know what, just to sort of not confuse you too much, let's just go and delete this entry. This this right here is how yours should look like, okay? So you should just have one entry that says John Doe. If it were to go in here and now refresh the website, there we go, go in here and refresh my table. You can now see we have Jane Doe and then the date of birth that I, I set in here. So. In this sort of simple way, this is how an MVC model works. We have one model, which is the user class, that takes care of all the different database connections. It doesn't do anything else than that, just database connections. And you want to make this as simple as possible. If you have multiple queries you want to run in a database, don't include them all inside one method. Create different methods for them because then you can reuse the code again and again and again. And just simply refer to two different methods from this class here if you need to do two operations inside the database. Um, and then we have the user view that goes in, shows information inside the website, and the user controller that goes in and updates information inside the database. Um, the last thing we need to do, because we don't need it anymore, is to delete our test class. So I'm gonna go in here, right click it, and say delete. Yes, move to trash. So now we essentially have an MVC model going on inside our website. Now there is one thing that you guys might have a question about, which is something that I will go through in the next episode, which is if I were to go inside an actual website, because this is sort of a test example. Let's say I have an actual website where a user goes in, there is a form on the website, they type in their first name, last name, date of birth, and they submit it, how is that going to be handled? Because right now I'm showing you just like by refreshing the browser that we're creating a new user inside the database. Let's actually go and delete this because I don't wanna keep refreshing the browser and creating new Jane Doe's like I did in the last episode, confusing you guys or something. Um, so in the next episode, I'm going to be creating a form inside the index page and actually showing you what the process is of actually doing something where you have to pull out information or insert information inside a database using a form, which is more realistic to what we actually do inside a website. So I hope you enjoyed this episode and I'll see you in the next one.